What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Are you ready for another model car unboxing video? Well, today we've got another great model car kit from Round 2, AMT Round 2, and this is the 1929 Ford Model A Woody Station Wagon in the Coca-Cola Livery. You can also build this as a pickup truck. This is the four-in-one model kit from the past, and you can build these as either stock or custom. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Have you ever wondered how they delivered Coca-Cola back in the 1920s? Well, in today's video, we're going to take a look at this amazing little 1929 Ford Model A Woody Wagon, which is done up in the Coca-Cola livery with a bunch of Coca-Cola crates. Now, one thing that's cool about this, of course, is the artwork on the box. This is just tremendous, and this is what really sold me on getting this kit for my own collection. However, I also do sell it over at www.monster-hobbies.ca if you would like one of your own. So this is a 125th scale model kit for ages 8 and up and is a joy to build and you can build it as either the stock version or as a hot rod and also as a pickup truck. On this side of the box we can see the custom version of the pickup and we also get this wonderful 1970s era bicycle which is also included in the kit. On this side of the box, we see the wonderful Hot Rod Street version of the custom pickup. Again, looking really nice with the Coca-Cola logo on the door, as well as the Coca-Cola logos up on the seat. And here we also get some special crates of Coca-Cola in the glass bottles. The bottom of the box also shows the parts silhouettes, as well as the decals here and the tires and the chrome components that you get with the kit. This is for age level 14 and requires both glue and paint. And now let's open up the box and see what's inside. One thing that I found kind of unique with this box is there is a little bit of a waxy film on the outside of the box on the lower box. So that was kind of interesting. So here we get our instruction sheet. We also get our decals. Here we have the Coke bottles in that nice Coke bottle green, just like back in the past. We have both our woody body as well as the pickup body inside this bag. There's our tires. There's the wonderful Ford fenders. Here we have some plastic components, which we're going to take a look at how to install as we go through the instruction sheet. We also have clear components, which include the bicycle wheels. Then we have a parts bag full of white sprue, as well as one that has the engine and the wheels and running gear. And then at the bottom of the box, we get our chrome components, and we also get a very cool looking late model Ford V8 in here for the custom. So I will clear all this out of the way, and we'll take a look at the instructions. Here we have our instruction sheet for our AMT Coca-Cola 1929 Ford Woody slash pickup. And this model kit is a four in one. So again, you can build it either stock or custom, but as a stock Woody wagon like here, or also as a stock pickup truck and a custom wagon and a custom pickup truck. Here is the illustration from the box art in black and white, and it does look really fabulous. The instruction sheet also includes the important section here, which is basically before you begin to assemble your model kit, study the instructions carefully. And then it talks about flash and getting rid of mold lines and everything else. And then down at the bottom, it has a box for tips for advanced modelers. And again, it tells you how to wet sand your model and watching up for static electricity as you're painting and all kinds of other things down here. There is also a section here for the tools and techniques, and these are the items that you will need in order to build this model kit that are not really supplied with the model kit, like using a sharp hobby knife and doing heat swag right here to uh, expand out parts so they lock in place, using tweezers and also using your hobby cement. Assembly step number one shows the engine, and this is for the stock build of our model. This is the 200 cubic inch four-cylinder Ford flathead engine, 
and it consists of relatively small amount of parts. You have your fan belt and your generator here, as well as your fan molded as one piece. The right and left hand side of the engine block, which also includes your transmission. The valve or cylinder head cover, actually, because the valves are coming up from the bottom in this engine. We also have our distributor up top, and then the exhaust manifold with the updraft carburetor and the tailpipe extension. Now this engine was all new for 1929, and it replaced the Model T flathead. Now if you plan to build the custom version of this kit, AMT has given you this wonderful chrome-plated flathead Ford 60 V8 engine. Now this is not to be confused with the Model T flat 4 engine, which I was alluding to with the stock version of the engine. This is actually the 60. So this engine came out in the early 30s. And uh, here it is all done up in chrome for the custom. So what we have is the right and left hand side engine block, as well as the oil pan starter motor and the transmission all molded into place. We have these wonderful cylinder heads, which are also chrome plated. And we have a dual carburetor intake manifold, as well as these chrome little air cleaner pots, which will glue on the top. We have the upper radiator hoses and then here we have our belts and pulleys as well as a generator molded as one piece and a separate fan. Step two shows our wheels going together. Now first off we start with the stock wheel and tire arrangement and these are consisting of three pieces. One thing you need to make sure you do is to align the spokes. Now on the real car these would all be wire spokes so they need to be aligned so that the cross is in the back. In the front, you've got the straight spoke going through the center of the cross. Now, take your time to do this and make sure it's all lined up. You need to make five of these wheels, four for the actual car, and then one that's going to be mounted as a spare. Now, if you want to build the custom, you also get spoke wheels, but this time they are replacing the stock spoke wheels with American Racing Mag style chrome spoke wheels. These are the five spoke ones, and they will go through these big, cool looking Goodyear tires and then get added onto the rear ring here. Now, number 46 is for the rear, number 47 for the front. You want to make two for the back and two for the front. Next up, we have step three, which is the chassis assembly. And step 3A is for both stock and custom. What we have here is the back of the radiator going into the chrome shroud. We also have our headlights here getting assembled. So there's the backs with a little bit for the horn. And then here we have the bell of the horn being glued on, as well as our headlight lenses. Now these ones are not cross patterned. They're actually just vertical lines. So you want these still to go north and south. Down here we have our license plate which glues up underneath and there are some little brackets that are molded onto this bar and those would align up with that license plate. Now we attach our two-piece radiator onto our fenders, same with the headlights here, and this is the entire fender assembly. And in this stage we can also add in our motor, either being stock or custom, but here they're showing basically the stock engine. Step 3B is the stock and custom front end. Now this is fully steerable, so you want to make sure that you follow all the directions which are written off screen over here in a big box. Here's where you're going to use that heat swag to uh, heat up these pins that are going through and lock them in place, like down there. And I don't think you need to heat swag this one because it's getting glued into these little hooks. Now these hooks, there's one on the top like this, and one underneath like that and then they align up and they create a hole like that so be careful that these don't get broken off it happened to me on a very old version of this kit that i had and it was pretty hard to try to recreate one of these hooks in here to get the front end to stay back on so right here what we have is the front axle with the semi-elliptical front spring also molded as one piece. There is a pin that will slip through. Now, these are your front wheel kingpin sort of things. So these go into there, and then that pin slips through this one. This end goes into your wheel, as shown here. 
And then here we have our drag linkage, which will go onto the back here and here. And then here we've got our front bar, and this little hole goes onto the bottom of the engine. We also have these drum brakes with the slot in them. Now this will hook over this little collar that you can see here, and then it'll glue to the outer bit of the wheel. So this goes on first, then the wheel goes onto that pin. Don't put any glue on these pin ends, but put the glue around here and then cement the wheel on. And then that way, this will rotate around the little collar and the glue here will lock this wheel on from falling off of this pin. Next up, we have panel 3C, and this is the stock and custom rear axle. There's actually two illustrations, so I'll start with the first one. Here we have the rear axle, and the semi-elliptical rear spring gets glued in here and here. In the, there's a notch there, and there's a little sort of box thing down here. So those get glued together as one unit. The next illustration shows how the wheels are attached onto the rear axle, and it is very much the same as the front. So there's the brake drum, which goes into that little groove there, and then the wheel goes onto the pin, and then you want to just apply glue again to that very outer ring here, not in there and not on the pin, and then glue the brake drum backing into that hole with the wheel on that pin. So then these wheels will rotate around the center of the rear axle. Here we have panel 3D, and this is the chassis for the stock configuration of the model, and everything goes onto the chassis right here. So what we have is our assembled front axle, and the bottom of that spring will go into right here where the mounting bracket is, and that little back end goes onto a pin. I do believe it's mounted on the transmission. There is also the steering linkage right here, which glues onto there and somewhere up onto this side of the axle. We also have our front bumper, which glues on here. This is chrome plated. Here we have the battery. Now this is the bottom of the battery because this is a, in a battery box. That will glue right into here. We also have our exhaust pipe and muffler, which glue on the back end of the engine right where the exhaust pipe is off the engine and then you would drop on your rear axle and the bottom of the drive shaft is going to go right into the back of that engine there and the bottom of the spring will also glue right into here in that mounting bracket you also have the option of building this in custom so here is 3d custom and what we have is much like the stock version, we've got our chrome bumper being glued onto the bumper horns. We have our front axle being dropped on in the same way as the stock version onto the pin on the back of the engine and on the mounting bracket with the spring. We also have our steering linkage which glues in here and onto the axle. But here we have these little tiny exhaust pipes which go on either side of the engine block as well as these mufflers. And then the exhaust pipes back here actually have to swing up underneath the arms on our rear differential. And then we have the little chrome caps on the end of our exhaust which decorate it up in the back. Also that drive shaft goes into the back of the engine down here and you need to add glue onto the bottom of the spring and into the bracket back here and then you're able to glue that up and align it all so that this thing will sit level. So now our instruction sheet takes a bit of a sidestep and gets divided into either if you want to build this as the woody wagon or the pickup truck. So here we're starting with the woody assembly. So in step four, we have our dashboards. Now here you've got your stock version, which is the dashboard panel. You have your steering column. Your steering wheel gets glued on the end of the column and this slides in. And we also have our chrome gauges, which gets glued on down below. Over here to the custom version, you get a different dashboard panel. And then here you got these wide instrument panels with many different instruments, including the speedometer, which gets glued onto here. Our steering column does not have the little bars on there like this. It's just a straight rod. And then we have this nice deep dish 1950s style steering wheel up above. 
Step five is showing our floor pan assembly. And here we have a chrome shifter, that's for the custom. Or you can use the stock shifter right here. We've got our front floor pedals. This is the brake lever. Then here we've got our full front bench seat. There are two buckets which go right behind that. And then the rear bench seat. Now this is optional, you do not need this. You also do not need the little bucket seats here. And since this is going to be a Coca-Cola delivery truck, I kind of would leave these out because it's not really the um, passenger liner kind of woody wagon. AMT does make a kit for that. I have reviewed it. You can check out that right up here. But uh, for this one, like I say, I would leave these out and just fill it with those Coke crates. Panel 6 begins our body assembly. And what we have here is a body that is a four-door woody that we have to actually alter in order to make it as a two-door woody delivery truck. So instead of AMT making a whole new body for this, which I think they should have actually tried to do, they instead sort of throw the onus onto the model builder. So what you need to do in order to make this the two-door is right here where it's shaded, which is the top of the door, and then these two posts down here, as well as this little tiny bit in just underneath that uh, horizontal bar. You have to cut those out with either your hobby knife or hobby saw and get rid of them completely. And then you need to fill in this little line here and the little line that went up with some putty and sand it really nicely so that it looks like one piece of wood in here, which is what it would be on the real two-door version of the woody. So that being said, after you clean up the body, you put these wood grain panels up here and here, and that would fill them all in. You also have the opening tailgate, so you need to sandwich that in between here and here before you glue these in. And then there's the back of the tailgate, which is also much like the wood pattern in here with the beams, which glues onto there. So these are sort of like plywood sheets, and these are actual parts of the framing. Now, what you need to do in once you cut this out is use the flat plastic panels and glue them in here. That would be before these go in. And here you've got your windshield, which goes to the front of the car, and the dashboard, which glues in underneath. And then in the back, you also have the window, which will go up inside there across the back opening, just above the opening tailgate. Now, unfortunately, this part does not open upward like it should. It's just meant to sit in there. So you sort of have to decide if you're going to put that in there or not and just have the swing down tailgate. The body assembly continues in this illustration where we see the outside of the completed body. Now, if you have made it into the full wagon for the Coca-Cola, you need to remove the rear door handle or not even attach it, I guess, and fill the little hole right there. But keep the one in front because that's how you're going to open up your front door. Now, what we have here is the f assembled floor pan being glued up underneath. We also have the steering column and the steering wheel going through on our dashboard. Here we have our little sun visor, which glues up there. Now, there are two holes on the body, as we'll see, for the sun visor to go into. And then here we have our firewall being glued up right into there. And then out back, you also have your rear tail lamp. Now, this might have just been a reflector back in 29, but underneath is the license plate, and right here is the mounting bracket. These are all three pieces, and this will glue on the bottom of that assembled floor pan. Panel 7 shows the final assembly for our Woody. Now, here we have the body being glued onto the chassis. You have five little chrome caps, which will go onto the ends of those wheels, onto the wheel caps. And then here we have our mounting bracket for the spare tire, which glues right on the fender here and the tire going down there. Make sure you put the body on first. Now to attach the radiator to the firewall, there are these braces right here, which are V-shaped. They are very thin, so when you do actually go to scrape the seam lines off them, be careful you don't snap them right there. You have the radiator cap going on the top of the radiator. And then if you get this aligned up perfectly, you can drop the hood down and that would make it a tight fit. Now, if you are building the hot rod version with the Ford 
V8 in there, you probably will not need the brace. Uh, definitely not the hood, because you want that big V8 sticking out there and, um, you know, looking cool. But if you want, you can actually cut the bottom parts of the hood off and just leave the top curve there if you need to cover that engine. Not sure how it's going to hit your air cleaners, but again, it's all test fit. Now here, if you want the tailgate down, there are these optional chains. I know they look like a pipe. They might even just be a swinging bracket. You'd have to take a look at the actual tailgate on a real Model T in order to know what they are. But they go on the end of the tailgate here and up onto the post at the back of the body. Now if you are planning to build the pickup, you actually have to go on the opposite side of the instructions. And here we get sort of going back in time from what we showed before. We're back into panel four. This is the floor pan. So this one is a little shortened up floor pan just for that pickup truck body. What you have here is your floor pedals gluing down here. You have that parking brake lever right there then your gear shift right behind it, or you can use the custom gear shift here. Panel 5 shows the pickup truck body, and what we have here is the body down below. We've got our firewall being glued to the front of the body. Here we have the front windshield frame, and it also has the dashboard molded down below. So there's the stock gauges, which glue into these two holes. Then here we have our glass being glued into place here in our windshield frame. This is the difference here with the custom steering wheel and steering column, or use the stock one, which has the two bars here, and those were used for advancing the spark and that sort of thing on the engine. And we also have our steering wheel, which glues onto here. So all this goes together, and then you have your pickup truck body. Here we have the final assembly for the body of our pickup truck. Now this is a little bit different than the Woody wagon, but has much of the same components, of course, being a Model A. So here we have the five chrome caps being glued onto the ends of the wheels for the stock version. Of course, if you built this the street rod, you don't need those because you got the Krager five spoke mags, or the American Racing mags, whichever I said before. Now here we've got your bracket again, but this time it doesn't go straight up and down, it goes out to the side, and that glues onto the back of the pickup truck box right there. You also have your little light on the back, or your reflector, and then the mounting for the uh, license plate right there. Here you got the pickup truck bed, and there is a tailgate which glues into place. We have our stock wheel and our stock mounting bracket, which will glue right here onto the fender. There's the little door handle, which will go onto the body right there in a little hole. We got that front bench seat, which glues into place once the body is down. We also have the front floor pan. That goes on first, actually. Then the body and all this drop into place. You have the optional top up, which would fit here on the back of the bed. Or, sorry, on the back of the truck itself. And it is a good, it's a good fit. It does fit onto the top of that windshield frame pretty well. Here we've got a little chrome cap which I forgot to mention also goes in the same location as on the Woody, and that's right here on the cowl, and that's because there was a gas tank right there on the actual car. Then we have our brace again, and our hood, the radiator cap on the front, and on our top in the back we also have a little window which glues right into place here. Now I'm not sure if that would have actually been glass on the real car, or if it was a plastic, because they were using both back in the day. The plastic was able to fold up, but the glass was not. It was heavier, and uh, it always remained flat, of course, but could break. <laughs> so that's sort of our arrangement for the pickup truck. Once it's all together, it does look really nice, and your front wheels will turn left and right, as well as rotate around this way, if you've done that entire thing correctly. Now we get into a couple of the little optional components which come with this kit, which are also really cool. So the first is the chrome-plated bicycle. Now, if you do this right as well, you can also have the handlebars steering left and right, because there is 
sort of a half pipe on this side of the bicycle frame as well as a half pipe on the other end of the bicycle frame. This is chrome. Now what you can do is carefully scrape away the chrome on the glue surfaces in here. I would use a liquid cement for this, but once you have the handlebars in here, don't scrape the chrome off the handlebars where this is going to be. Leave all the, like the barrel in here, chrome, as well as the rod chrome, because the glue will not stick to a painted surface. But if you have the outer edge here where they're going to glue together nice and clean of uh, chrome, then this whole cylinder will glue together and you'll be able to turn your handlebars once the glue is dried left and right. Now the wheels are transparent so when you do the spokes be very careful not to get it in between spokes with your paint and your tires would pop on to the end. These are hard plastic so again everything can be glued together. Just be careful with what you're doing so that you don't get paint where you don't want it. The bike builds up really nice and you can use it in your garage dioramas off to the side or even just throw it in the back of the pickup truck. Finally, since this is a Coca-Cola model, we also have these great bottles and crates molded as one piece. You get four of them in the kit. So here we have our green bottles and it does have color callouts. So there would be like red caps. It does say to paint a bit of brown in here so it looks like full Coke bottles. And then down here you're going to add wood as a wood color. And there are decals you can put on here that say Coca-Cola that were designed for the old style wooden crates. Here we have the body for our 1929 Ford Woody. And we're looking at it from the top down and it does look kind of weird. Like it, you can't really tell what's going on here. But what we have is a nice fabric covered roof. It's not actually fabric. There is a name for this material, but I can't remember what it is. I've got a 1926 Dyson Cyclopedia, which is an automotive encyclopedia. It tells you everything about building cars and whatnot. And it does tell you what that fabric is, but I have forgotten what it's called and I forget which page it's on because that book has over a thousand pages in it. Now, as you can see, you've got the nice wooden frame in here. These are the posts that you need to remove. So you've got to cut it off here and then cut right up into here and cut here as well as cutting it out in here and then you're going to fill in this line back here as well as the line down here and going down there with your favorite putty and then sand it carefully trying not to remove these little bolts in between here and then it will look like a solid piece like it's supposed to look like on the actual woody. There is quite a bit of flash on this kit as you can hear, but it's not too bad. Now when you're scraping flash in these cages in here, you need to think about direction. <clears throat> so use your number 11 hobby blade <clears throat> and scrape. Hold the model like this and scrape every line down in here, then turn it this way <clears throat> and go along these lines, then turn it this way and use your blade along the bottom and then turn it your final way and go along here and that way you will clean out any of the, the seam lines that are on these parts in a uniform pattern. So remember to think about how to do it. Now along the back here, again it looks really nice going down in there. There is a nice wooden roof in here with all the slats, which is really cool, but there are sink marks in the four corners. So again using that number 16 hobby blade to remove them, that's always good. You can see a lot of flash around the windshield molding and on the windshield wiper. So when you're cleaning that up, make sure you don't actually break off the windshield wiper here. These ones would be manual, so there's an actual lever on the other side, and you would crank that, and that would crank the windshield wiper. Now here you've got the little holes. That's for mounting that front uh, sun visor. But again, overall, this looks quite nice, even though from the top down, it just doesn't look like anything. Here we have some plastic sheets which AMT has nicely cut for us. These are the panel fillers for the upper part of the woody body. 
I'm going to leave them in the plastic bag just so I don't uh, lose them somewhere because these are the size of the thickness of, you know, box board, your cereal box cardboard, I guess. But overall, these are basically evergreen sheet styrene that's been cut to fit. Now, taking a look at the side of the body, the way these would go would be to be having them glued up here just like that. So again, that would be your liquid glue. And remember, this is going to be gone right in here and here up to there. So putting in that Coca-Cola script going right across, you will need to remove those. But overall, it does look like they are sized to fit properly, so there's not too much of an issue going on. Now, checking from the back, you can see that the width there, they give you just enough for it to hook in up into the railing in here, right into this edge. So again, it's a easy way to get that together for the body and should be quite effective once you remove these side pillars in here. Now, for those of you that wish to build the pickup truck version of the kit, here we have the little pickup body. Now, it's a lot shorter than the Woody is. You got the nice little door with the two hinges on it. There is quite a bit of flash right in this corner here. So again, you'll need to clean that up with your hobby files. Uh, it's got that nice little sweeping line that the Model A's had, which is really quite cool. And then you've got your upper part of the cowl as well as the lower part. These are actually molded as, or on the real car, they're actually two separate pieces, just like this. Three, I guess, right and left hand side, and then the top one that rolls over. So you can either get rid of the seam line here or just bring it down so it still looks like there's a seam going across there, but without it being like as harsh as this is because of the molding process. But overall, this is a nice little body that actually fits properly on that chassis. Next up, we have the fenders of our Model A, and here is a round two stamp just sort of calling out that it's Coca-Cola and RC2 and all the rest in English and French and everything else. So it's quite a bit of a stamp on here. But if you paint these over with flat black, all that will disappear. Now these Model A's, of course, had gloss black fenders, <laughs> not flat black. And uh, that was sort of the one thing that they kept from the Model T days. And I do believe you could get the bodies painted any color you wanted, but the fenders were primarily black. Anyway, you've got the mounting holes for those front headlights, as well as the engine down here, the little rails up top. Again, really nice molding. There are the, uh, on these uh, rubber mats here for your fenders, they actually do have a pattern on them, which is quite accurate. There is a lot of flash around this, so again, you're going to have to clean it up with your sanding block. There's a nice wood grain plywood floor in here, but mold marks in the corners again and up in here. So when you're getting rid of those, the sad part is you actually get rid of that bit of wood grain in here. So I would just use the knife just to kind of knock them down a little bit. I'm not sure how you're going to get around that if you fill it in, maybe putting in a actual piece of wood down here? I don't know. Here you've got the bolts for the front mountings as well as bits in the back. Again, this will be quite nice with the axles. And I do like these little rails that they put in here which are holding these on. They're uh, brackets. They're not rails. What am I talking about? The only thing that's kind of... I'm not sure if this is on a real Model A, but there's the tubes down here and that's to hold in those headlamps. So how do the fenders work with those two bodies I just showed? Well, starting with the woody, it's not quite going to fit in perfectly because I need the floor and everything in order to show this. But you can see that there is a nice fit between the body and the fenders in that arch in there. Might just have to clean up a little bit of flash, but I found that it was pretty tight as a fit on uh, the other models that I built in the past. Uh, there's flash just under here that needs to be sanded down in order for this to fit flat on those fenders. But overall, it's quite nice. And for the little pickup body itself, it will go somewhere in here. Yeah, there's these two little notches. 
and those correspond with those angles in there and the notches will hold that in just like that so again you get quite a nice little pickup truck body fitting on there again I'll have to get rid of any flash on the bottoms here in order for this to fit perfectly well one thing about this is there are some old marks right in here I just noticed so again you need to remove those with that number 16 hobby blade but overall the fenders are really quite nice and this will look good once they're all cleaned up and painted here we have the parts for our pickup truck so what we have here is the convertible top that's folded upward we have the pickup truck bed the floorboard the windshield and the dashboard mold as one piece. We also have our custom exhaust pipes here. We have the mounting bracket for our spare tire for both models. We also have the rear tailgate and the steering wheel, the stock version for both models. So bringing this up to the camera, we can see issues with mold marks up in the corner. I do believe this kit used to be made by MPC way back in the day. And then when AMT bought MPC back when they were AMT Ertl, they got rid of the MPC logo off this model. I think that's what the story is. You can always check on scale mates. In the four corners are four mold marks. And again, this has that nice plywood texture in here, but that'll be obliterated in the four corners if you scrape this out. However, because this is sort of a one sheet deal, actually, no, I'm wrong. There are rails in it. I was thinking you could just put a piece of balsa wood in here and cover that up and it would still look like wood. In fact, you could do that and stain it a little bit just to make it look dirty and used. On the bottom of the floor panel, there are mold marks right here and here. And there are also little bars, which I do believe lock into the floor. So you want to get rid of the mold marks because they're going to interfere with the fit of the bars into the floor panels. There is a bit of flash around the openings here. And there are mold marks right on the dashboard there and there. So again, this is all stuff you're going to have to clean up with your hobby blade and sandpaper. Same as on the back of the tailgate panel, mold marks. But again, if this was really an MPC kit, this is probably quite old. Nice part is there's no mold marks underneath here on the pickup truck bed. And from the sides, it looks pretty nice. And again, same as on the roof here. There's no mold marks on the outside, which is what we want. And you can see the nice bars and everything that are part of the roof itself. This, of course, is a folding canvas roof on the real car. Would have been nice if they gave us a little canvas folded down boot to go with this. But they didn't. There's the Ertl stamp right in here. So again, what I was saying was true about it being an AMT Ertl kit. Now here's our floorboards right in here, and it's got that nice rubber mat down below on it, which is really good. Looking at the windshield from the opposite side, you can see all the mechanisms and the folding bits, which would be on the real car, because these windshields, I think they folded from the bottom outward, sort of swing out like a door. And then here we have the Ford logo stamped right in the middle of the tailgate and the two metal straps with the bolts. So again, it is quite a nice casting but there is a lot of cleanup on the inside of it on this parts tree we have the two inner panels which will glue into the body these also have the little metal brackets at the bottom for the tailgate to fit into here we have our rear axle this is the rear stock muffler we have our sun visor and we have the front wishbone right here and that of course is part of our uh, suspension assembly turning this over you can see all the nice detail in here this is the inner side of the panel there are mold marks in the corners unfortunately and again on this side there's actually mold marks going up around the curve so really keep an eye out for them the wood grain on here is molded really nicely I don't know how well you guys can see that but it does look like the proper plywood sheeting here we've got some mold marks on the wishbone so again you're going to have to clean those off and you know sand them around i guess there is flash everywhere but overall i mean it's not bad considering maybe how old this kit is you're going to have to look that up on skillmates 
The differential is quite nice. It's got the bolts molded in in the nice pattern, just like how it's supposed to be on a Model A rear axle. So overall, again, this is quite a nice casting. You just got to try to deal with those mold marks. Here we have the floor panel for the Woody, and it's got this nice little hump right here. That is actually where the rear leaf spring is going in because that's transversely mounted. So here we have the different bench seats. One of these is the front, then you've got the one in the back as well, and the two buckets which are going here and here. So again, it's really quite a nice kit. It's got the molded in plywood floor panels in here, as well as this denoting metal because it's bolted in right in that area. You also have the hood right here. So let's bring this up to the camera just for a look. Now these seats were leather back in the day. So you've got the flat panels. So it's very basic, of course. And then you've also got the seams going up there where they sewed the leather together. Really nicely done. Uh, there's that plywood texture again in here. And it does have all the brackets for mounting the seats in. So you could actually paint these black with the wood around here being wood color, of course. And uh, the black around here would look like the steel brackets they would have used back in the day. Up front, you do get a bit of a rubber mat, I do believe, which is going on there. Now, turning it over, there are mold marks into the bottom here. But again, you get the nice plywood into the back where you're going to see it. And it's smooth here where it's actually going up into the fenders. Looking at the hood, there are mold marks up underneath in here. But I didn't really look at it this way for you guys. So there you've got the vents. These are little locks that hold this down to the fenders. And then you've got the handle right there. So again, AMT did a nice job of making this look accurate. Or maybe MPC. I guess it would have been MPC. I do believe they actually score quite high as uh, related to the actual 29 Model A. Again, for the vintage of this, it looks great. Just got to clean up flash. Our next parts tree has a lot of different components, a lot of them being suspension components for the front axle. Here we have our rear semi-elliptical leaf spring and then we've got our front axle and the elliptical spring molded as one piece we also have our steering columns right there one for the custom which is smooth and then the stock one with the levers up top then we also have our little a uh, wires here which are going up into the radiator and the firewall then here we've got our dashboard for the woody we've got that battery we've got the radiator right there we have our firewall, we've got our tailgate components, we also have our pedals for the floor, we've got the pins for the front axle, we've got the axle uh, king pins, I guess, and then there's our connecting rod right there, the four brake drums, we also have the bicycle tires, be careful cutting these out that you don't crack them. Then here we've got our custom steering wheel with some flash. Ah, and our wheel backs. Remember, there's two that are deeper and two that are shallower. The shallow ones go on those front wheels. So bringing this up to the camera again, you can see the plywood in here and the little metal brackets because this is a frame which the plywood was going into in four panels. And then here we've got the, the uh, wooden components that will go over top of this. Now, there are mold marks in the four corners. There also, I do believe, a little hole there, and that was for mounting that chain thing. And then we've got our rivets on the back as well here. Again, really nice work. There are the mold marks, which I'll have to get rid of, especially here on the backs of the wheels. And that is so that it doesn't interfere with the actual wheel itself once you glue it on. Because remember, this has got to rotate around these little pins on the axle. Where are they? Right there. So you want to make sure all this is clean. There's no seam lines in here. Anything that's going to prevent those wheels from turning on those little pins. So the radiator actually has the grill in there. Firewall has the coil right in here, as well as some other components for the electrical. There's a little mounting posts for this brace right here. Again, really nice work. There are mold marks right in the dashboard, so you got to get rid of those. And be careful that you don't gouge this. Keep it nice and flat. No gouges. 
the battery has the little cross brace in here that would be holding it to the actual car itself. And again, you can see the nice little four bolts into each of those wheel backs. The only thing that uh, would be nice, but I'm not sure how they would be able to do this, is these are not supposed to look like Pac-Man. They're actually supposed to have a you know, hole right in the center of them. And then this bit out here would also look, you know, like this side here. So this would, should just basically have a hole in it, but I'm not sure how they would attach them the way they've got it mounted here. Anyway, there's the steering wheel. I do believe this is out of some kind of Chrysler, or maybe it's a 1956 Ford or something. But overall, this looks really good and it will look quite cool whether you choose Woody, Pickup, Custom, or Stock. Here we have the parts tree that contains the engine block as well as the dashboard for the Woody and our custom exhaust pipes. There is also this little blanket roll in here, which is not mentioned in the illustrations. And we have our wheels with the spokes and some V8 engine parts. Now, you got to make sure that you clean all these spokes in the same way as you're cleaning the woody cages on the body. Because there's a lot of flash or seam lines on all of these spokes, even these spokes. And be careful because you also have a valve stem sticking out here. So try not to remove that when you're scraping the seam lines out of this thing. You can use your little triangular files in here. Those work quite well. Now let's bring this up to the camera and take a look at our flat engine, our flat four, the Model A block. And here we've got the starter molded in place. We've got the radiator hose here. Again, really nice work. You can see all the bolts underneath. Now when you glue this together, you're going to have to get rid of the seam line on that oil pan from them being like this, right? And a uh, good way to do that is just clip it off down here and like here on the transmission and glue it together. And then once it's all glued together, get rid of these little connecting points as a unit and sand this thing as a unit. So then that way you don't have the seam line in there. So again, looking at the wheels from the back, there is a lot of flash and mold marks. You'll have to get rid of those. Some of them are in the form of pins. Now, it would have been nice if AMT had of, or MPC had of had a hole there and a pin, and then you could just drop this in and everything would line up, but they don't, so you're going to have to do it the way they show in the instructions. Nice thing is, the Model A's had four-wheel brakes, whereas Model T only had them on the rear axle, as well as there was a drive shaft sort of way to stop the uh, power getting to the rear wheels. But here, they've eliminated that. And they've used four-wheel disc brakes, or drum brakes, sorry, because they knew how to hook it up and uh, get that going. Whereas in the Model T days, they didn't know how to do that because they didn't know how to turn the front wheels and have like a brake cable or something going out there to flex with those to uh, stop the wheel. But again, you can see the nice five-bolt pattern and everything, so it's quite nice. There's the belts for the V860 as well as a little fan. And then there's that roll again. That's pretty cool. And there's something here. I'm not quite sure what this is. But when you turn it over, it's got like two little pins in here. So that might have been for a trophy or something. I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it's interesting. <laughs> there's the top of the cylinder head and you got the four spark plugs there as well as all the bolts around the edges and the little hole there for mounting the distributor, which is right here. There's that linkage. And we also have our carburetor and intake and exhaust manifold. It's all one big thing. Again, the roll on this mat is really quite neat. It's even got the belts going around it. So I guess maybe that was for a camping thing on one of the variations back in the day. There's those chain things for the tailgate. Again, really neat looking stuff. And a lot of work to get rid of the flash on this, but it will pay off if you've got the patience. Here we have the chrome parts tree, and this one is really cool because you get the solid chrome engine block. Now there is a special trick to putting these together in order to make them look really nice on your model. 
And I've done that in this video that's scrolling across right here. So be sure to check it out before you actually start gluing together your engine. So what we have is the right and left hand side engine block, which also includes the oil pan and the starter motor, as well as the transmission in the back here. We've got the cylinder heads for that as well. And right underneath is our intake manifold, which is also chrome, and our chrome air cleaner pots, which glue on the top of those downdraft carburetors. Here we have our radiator shroud as well. We've got the Ford license plates, but you can always make up your own. I've got a video for that too, which is right here, how to make up your own license plates using paper. Now here we've got our headlights and the back of the horn, and there's the front of the horn. We also have these little mirrors, which I do believe are supposed to mount on the tires. There's our instrument panel. We've got the little chrome for our wheel caps. We've got our two different shift levers here. We also have our instrument panel for the stock version, our front bumper, and there's the chrome bicycle in three pieces. There's the custom shift lever, as well as the side mirror and the chrome ends. And then here we've got our four American racing wheels. So bringing this up into the camera, you can see the nice uh, cylinder heads. These ones are designed for air cooling because they've got the fins in them going this way. You also have your spark plugs in there and the little mounting points for those upper radiator hoses. There's the intake manifold looking really great. We've also got our chrome radiator there. Look at the gauges for the custom. Again, really cool stuff. Really excellent work. There's our chrome engine. You got the little slots in there just to line up the cylinder heads. And our bicycle, of course, with the wonderful chain in there. And there's those wheels. Really cool stuff. Turning it over again, you can see a lot of mold marks. You're going to have to clean those out of the radiator before you put the or the shroud before you put the radiator in there. Otherwise, it will be spaced incorrectly and cause you problems with that wishbone that's going up from here into the firewall. This is what I was talking about. If you sand this area off here and here, where the bike's going to glue together, as well as this little edge right there on that tube, you can glue this whole part together with liquid glue and keep it keep the chrome in here if you can, if it's not too tight. That's the issue if it's not too tight. If, you know, when you put your handlebars in here and here, do always do a dry fit first. If it is too tight, then you're going to have to get rid of the chrome in here. <laughs> um, but keep the chrome on that bar there that goes in here because glue will not stick to paint or chrome. So you can glue this together and then, if you're careful enough, just turn this a little bit and it will crack the glue out of here and allow this to turn left and right. If you don't want to do that, just glue this in the position you want it in. But uh, overall, I mean, if you want the steerable front forks, then that's my way of suggesting how to do it. You also want to get rid of the chrome on the inside of the banana seat so that glues together too because your points are here and here. And just down here, but not the back part here, because the wheel is going to go around in there. So again, very nicely done. I do believe the Ford logo is just sitting right there on the radiator. There might be a decal for that. We're going to take a look at the decal sheet coming up soon, but let's carry on with what we've got here. Here we have our clear plastic components that came with the kit. We've got our four Coca-Cola crates molded in this transparent bottle green, as well as our front windshield for the pickup truck and the windshield for the Woody wagon. And we've got our headlights here, as well as our wheels for the bicycle. Now, as you can see, you can see the spokes look really wonderful. If you're going to paint these spokes, be very careful because this is a solid plastic disc not to get any in between the spokes because that will come up pretty, pretty well and it will look like a solid wheel. So if you notice on the headlights, there are lines in here. They're just going down. There's no cross ones like in later cars. I do believe there's supposed to be a half circle in here and one up top on the real headlight, but AMT or MPC 
did not mold them as such. They're just lines. So this is what you want for your headlight. You want the lines to run north and south, just like that. You don't want them running east and west, like this. And definitely you want to make sure that you're not doing something where the lines are going off at whatever angle, or like that even. <laughs> so you want to make sure that everything lines up north and south on these headlamps. Looking at our little bottles, again, they look quite neat. They do stand up quite a bit. I think there's supposed to be 24 in here. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 4. 6 times 4, 24. So 24, 48, and 48 twice should be 96. <laughs> Math not working today. So you want to paint the edges of these because they're wooden crates with a wood grain or brown or something like that. And we'll take a look at the decals pretty soon here to see what sort of side decals they have for the crates. But overall, I think these things look wonderful. Add a little bit of brown around the edges to make it look like these are full bottles. And again, with our wheels, make sure you just paint the spokes and not anything lower. Here we have our tires for our 1929 Ford Woody. One thing that I've noticed is that AMT has added in some new tires for the custom. And I see that, you know, throughout the years, AMT is trying to redo all the rubber tire molds, you know, perfecting them, making them look better than what they are. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But here we have the original stock tires. Now, I don't think they've actually tried to change a mold on these because they're looking really ragged these days. And uh, there's a lot of flash up along the tops. So you're going to have to try to get those off using a wheel spinning tool with a large diameter hole in here. Uh, the tires are quite generic. So if you wanted to paint a white wall on them, you can get that in here. But it doesn't come with a white wall. If you want to see how to spin your tires and make them look good, check out this video scrolling across here. Now I'm going to move the stock tires out of the way for a minute and focus on the new Goodyears. So here you've got a nice tread pattern on the rear tires, which is quite tight and detailed. So it's more true to scale for what a tire tread would look like in 125th. The Goodyears up front again are quite new looking to me and they do have a lower side profile and quite a nice tread pattern in here. Now what I'm going to show you is the tires that came with my earlier edition which was from AMT Ertl. Now these are Goodyear Rally GTs and you can see that there is quite a side tread pattern in here and the tread is quite spacious compared to the newer treads which are a little tighter in there. So that's for those front wheels. Now what's going on in the back? Well, in the back, in the older kit, you also had the big Rally GTs, and these had those big wide treads on them as well, and the little pie plate crusties on the edge. Here, you can see this is more like an Indy Street type tire for road racing. The tread is quite tight in here compared to the open tread of the Rally GTs. So again, it is quite a different type of tire that they're putting into the more modern version of this AMT pickup truck. But again, our old stock tires, well, they could use a refurbishing from AMT just in order to make them look quite a lot nicer and take away a lot of that flash from the edges. Here we have the decal sheet for our Coca-Cola Woody and pickup truck. And what's really cool is you get all these different scripts which you can put into those side panels and keep for different projects as well. Here's the one for the back, I believe, in that window. Not quite sure if that would fit in. I hope it does. It looks like it should because it's the only one on here. The other cool thing is you get different sets of gauges for the instrument panels. So here's the ones for the custom which you get either in black with a white needle or white with a black needle. And then you get the gauges for the stock instrument panel. And they give you two sets. So you can save one set for a different earlier version of this kit if you want. Or for 
in case you accidentally lose one somewhere. Here you got drink a Coca-Cola in bottles in red script as well as in white. Same for the door panels. You also get the green triangle style, which is quite neat. And the little Coca-Cola guy with the bottle cap hat. Now down here are for the crates. And you also get two sets of Krager center decals. So that's for the wheel centers. And again, you can use this on your earlier version as well, just to keep it all nice and dressy looking. So here we get a Georgia plate from 1929. Or no, sorry, that's Florida. This one is Georgia here. And you also get Michigan down here. And then you get the Ford logo plate or two different versions of a Coca-Cola license plate. The choices on this decal sheet are all up to you. And of course you get a lot for different projects that you can add on later on to different models. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you this amazing model kit. And if you've built it before in the past, please let us know down in the comment section below. If you want to support us on this channel, don't forget to click that membership button. In that way, you can give us a little bit each month in order to help us grow financially and get some more cool models and whatnot into this video series. So until next time, everybody, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca in order so that you can get one of these great model car kits as well. And until next time, everyone, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.